All right, so we're gonna set up a live trap, try to catch ourselves a raccoon so we can do a little bit of a catch and cook. The trick is, is that uh, raccoons aren't in season right now, but we do have a raccoon that was given to me from a, a farmer as a nuisance animal, so we're gonna actually cook that. I wanna show just how easy it is to catch raccoons, so if you're, you know, we always talk about survival situations and catching game and raccoons are probably one of the easiest things to catch, right? Here, yeah, I would say. Yeah, Here and this are. is farmland. We're yeah. in southern Ontario this time, playing around. And uh, so this is typical off-the-shelf live trap um, because they won't let us use um, any other kind of foothold trap or or a body grip trap or anything of that sort. But these are these are legal for removing nuisance wildlife. So all that we're going to do is you're going to use an empty can of uh, salmon. Uh, I have a little bit of salmon left, and it smells pretty strong, right? Yeah. And uh, what have you done? Like you, you did a little trick? Yeah, well the lid had salmon stuck to it also. So I took the lid and I dragged it through the grass to leave a salmon scent trail from the little edge of the water here. There's a little spring fed creek and up to the edge of the trap, just in case something's traveling through the water, the raccoon will smell it or if it crosses the path. Yep. And we've got the chill camera set up over here. So hopefully we catch any of the action. Um, if we do catch something, we're gonna use that as rights to use the raccoon. If we don't catch anything, we're still going to eat the raccoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if anybody knows anything about raccoons, they're super easy to catch and they're extremely plentiful and they aren't on the most people's menu. I mean, they carry all sorts of really weird things and yeah. parasites and all those things. So they're not exactly very palatable, but we're going to try do our best to try to make it more palatable. We've got a recipe, uh, a Native American recipe I dug up. So we're going to yeah. we're going to try to put something together. They're not mentally pal palatable, but they're they're good eating. Yeah, they're a dark meat, right? And they have to be treated like a dark meat, so they have to be slow cooked. Anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. So all we're going to do is chuck this into the back. And uh, all it, all that activates it is a, it's a basically a foot pedal at the back. And when the animal steps on it, it closes shut and can't open again. So there we go. Set. I'm going to check this in the morning. And uh, like I say, if we do catch something, we're just going to release it. So there'll be no... Um, no killing this time, but there is going to be a dead animal. All right, so we check tomorrow? Yep. All right, cool. All right, guys, so here's here's the raccoon that we got as a nuisance animal. And uh, we're not going to stress this raccoon out too much. As long as we're not uh, right up in its face, it's not going to bother it. You can see it's just, it, it wants to get out of the light. They don't like to be out in the light. So we're going to turn this raccoon away and set it aside. Um, hopefully we got a, some good trail camera images. Alright, let's get this raccoon on its way. It's not light. Raccoon. One raccoon. And all it took was a empty can of salmon. Yep. Yeah. I mean, be pretty easy to do that with a bit of fish remains. Yeah, fish guts or something. Just drag them from the water up to your trap, throw them in the back. That worked out great. Yeah, and that's just a man man-made live trap. So it keeps your food if you want. If you want to catch an unlimited supply of raccoon and you needed it, that'd be the way to do it. Yeah, especially in an area where there's lots of nuisance raccoons, like if farmers have them or in vineyards, you could you could be supplying yourself with a lot of raccoons that way, right? Yeah. And it keeps your food fresh too. So if, you try, if you're doing this in the summer, you don't have to be too worried about your <coughs> food spoiling. Yeah. So we've got that raccoon that you had harvested earlier, and we're going to work our way through deglanding it. Um, so there's lots of good YouTube videos on how to degland and prepare a raccoon, which is how I've learned to do it. Um, this is my first one, so that's my disclaimer. In behind the leg. This one's, this one's not a very big, not a very big gland, but 
There's one. So that's what, that one's just basically in the ar in the back armpit, back yeah. leg armpit, right in the knuckle, in the joint knuckle. It looks like a little bean. Usually in a fresh raccoon it would be green. These ones are turned white. It's bigger on this side. Here, just keep it there. I'll zoom in there. See what it looks like. Yeah. So there's nothing like that on the other side. I'll look again. Yeah, maybe double check. Cause if if we don't get them, then they get an off flavor, right? Yep. I mean, this one it looks like that one. It's just smaller, right? So maybe you just didn't have a developed uh, gland on that side. I don't know. There's a little bit of fatty tissue there. I'll take that out. So when you cut the armpit, like the shoulder and arm is only held by muscle tissue, right? So you can find that separation. And then in here, that looks like one there. Where is it? Is that in view? Yeah. Basically, you, you you only want the meat. You, you don't want the fat. A lot of people talk about the fat, but uh, Wes S actually put out a good video on on rendering and cooking. Yeah, he rendered down the the fat, and he said it was good after it rendered. But yep. most people say it's no good. But he rendered it and filtered it and all that stuff. So, yep. He said it was. He said it was just fine. So there's an option too if you want to get fat from a raccoon it's to render render it down. There's some stringy arm tendons. Look at those. There's a bowstring just waiting to be made. So it's not a, not a tapeworm? In the uh, in the arm? <laughs> Pretty sure not. So these scent glands will be similar to what people have in their armpits. Given the the body odor. So you just you don't want that in the meat. You're not going to get any value from eating it. You can see some of these glands though, eh? Like along the spine here. Yeah, they said there's there's three on either side, so six in total along the spine. Okay. So we'll take that out. So we'll quarter this up. One quarter. One quarter. And uh, move on to step two. So there's some boneless meat, we can chunk that up. And uh, throw it in. All right. That's the least I could do. Well, now I feel like a princess. Someone's swatting my bugs for Someone's me. Someone's swatting your bugs while you do all the dirty work. <laughs> Not quite. There's all our pieces, I guess. So this recipe, uh, calls for about four cups of water, two cups of vinegar, and a large raccoon. We probably don't have a large raccoon, do we? We probably have small, small yeah. raccoon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've all got all, all cut up now. We're just gonna throw the pieces that we wanna keep in. Um, we figured we'd probably just try out the liver later, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead, throw that stuff in there. And then we're gonna, we have a little bit more than four cups of water in there right now, so we're gonna dump out our excess. And this is gonna work as a rinse too. We don't actually keep the brine, a little bit of the brine later on, and then we'll boil off a little bit of the water on our first boil. So this lets, we let this sit for eight hours, so it'll be ready for us for dinner. We're gonna go do some fishing. Right. Pour a little bit off. Yeah, pour a little bit of it off. This is just plain white vinegar. Oh, it stings! How many times did you cut yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Oh, yeah. Okay, and we have pickling salt or pickling spices. I'll maybe include that, but that's just what I use for my leeks. To pickle my leeks. So throw that in there. 
And then we're just gonna stir that around and let it sit. Eight hours, we'll come back. We'll, uh, we'll do a boil and add the rest of our ingredients to make a nice pot stew. So our raccoon's been sitting in the brine for most of today and now we're gonna, we're gonna save about a cup of the brine and we're gonna pull the pieces out. This is gonna be rinsed off and we're gonna boil in a cast iron. We're gonna do that for about an hour and a half until it's uh, nice and tender. And then we're gonna add our other ingredients. So we have uh, green pepper, uh, green pepper, potatoes, uh, onion, and some carrots. So that gets added after. So for now we're just gonna transfer this over just our pieces here and we're gonna get them so that they're nice and tender. It actually smells pretty good, which is encouraging. And it is becoming tender. You can see how the meat's all starting to fall apart already. So we're only gonna add a cup of this as our reserve. A cup or so, it's probably a little much. And the rest is going to be filled with hot water and then we're going to boil that off and then we'll add our ingredients after. One little piece left. There it is. How's it look? I don't know. It looks like uh, big chunks of meat and lots of onion. What do you think? It's all right. Yep. That's like a dark meat. I think it could get a little more tender. We got another hour and a half according to our recipe. Fit. I think so. Breakfast. Dig, dig in. Yep. Yeah, so we let our we let our raccoon stew overnight. It's a real stew. Carrot. A carrot. What? Pepper. We're gonna dig right into the raccoon. Potatoes. I'm gonna eat everything but the raccoon. Yeah, there's a raccoon. Raccoon hunk. Oh, oh, here's a here's a back leg. I don't know if it's as tender as they promised. We'll see. Get a potato yet? And the potatoes are cooked. And the potatoes are cooked. So there's one ingredient we didn't find, and that's the cold's foot ash, which the recipe called for. Yeah, that one's on my list of things to try out for sure. So this comes from a Native American cookbook. And uh, that was the only thing that we missed. So we'll see what, what the what the flavor is like with just the pickling salt. Wait, what first? Onion. 
It's already on my phone. Oh, good. That's what people really want to know about anyway. Sure they do. How do those onions taste after three hours or two pots? <laughs> like an onion. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the raccoon first. What? Yeah. That's your raccoon. Right there. Looks like a dark meat. What does it look like? Looks like beaver to me. Or uh hair I guess. It looks a lot like rabbit to me. Like a big rabbit. Well oh, that's good. It's good. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually good. I wasn't expecting it to be bad. No? When I had raccoon before it was on a, on a barbecue and it was really greasy. It was like eating greasy chicken. That's good. Yeah. That's like a good roast beef. Or a tender hair. Yep. Yeah, that's good. It's a little light on flavoring. Yeah. We have a lot of liquid, eh? You got a, you got a hair on your still. A hair on my hair? Oh no, it's a raccoon. <laughs> there it goes. Would you eat raccoon again? Oh yeah. For sure. There you go. Catch and cook a raccoon. That's good, I'm just waiting for it to cool down a bit so I can eat it like a chicken wing. Like a caveman, when oh, it's too hot to hold. Pretty tasty. It doesn't look like much, like I think it'd be, it would look different if you cubed it all and did it in that style of stew. It's twice the size of a rabbit. It takes two rabbits to meet your caloric demands for a day. At least two rabbits, probably three. So one raccoon would probably do it. And you throw in all this other stuff and also look at how much food is in there. <laughs> There's. There's a few meals of stew there, right?